Oh, it's time to paint an orc, finally. I love orcs, they're probably my favorite 40k faction. And within the orcs, the blood axes, they've got to be one of my favorite clans. They're just so full of unorky yet orky character. I just love them. And this war boss, the concept behind him is that he is a, well, he's pretending to be a space marine. He's doing a bit of a tactic and wearing some orc style power armor. He's got a bit of tech coming off his arm. Mate, look at his gun. It's got all the attachments. Got a four times ACOG scope, extended mag, got a thumb grip, attack stock. He's even got a suppressor. And I've done quite an extensive conversion to convert the Age of Sigma Mega Boss into this 40k Blood Axe War Boss. So make sure you check out the conversion video to see how we've done that. And the first thing that we've done is primed these subsections with Chaos Black Spray. And I want you to note that it's very thin. Look how you can just see through the, uh, the primer. You can see the white plastic and the, the grey plastic underneath. That's how we want it. So the paint will stick nicely to that speckled texture. As always, the first thing we got to do, consult the almighty paint rack. Got to figure out what colors we're going to use um, before we put any paint on this model. So we know that the colors are going to work well together. Then we can lay them out like this and get a bit of an idea of how they're going to look. And I call this my caveman style color theory. Just getting a bunch of colors together like this and going, yeah, that looks all right, doesn't it? We're going to paint this guy to make him look like an ultramarine because ultramarines are the most common and recognizable of all the space marine legions. And we want to make sure that that concept translates well. We want to make sure that this look, this orc looks like he's trying to be a space marine. So for the blues, we've got Macrag blue, Calgar blue. For the skin, we've got War Flesh, Warboss green, Strachan green. The browns are Rhinox Hide, Steel Legion Drab. For the road, we've got a bit of Mechanica Standard Grey and Avalanche Sunset, and possibly a bit of Tau Light Ochre for a bit of a, uh, a desert kind of dirt, sort of a Mad Max kind of theme. And he's actually going to have a hologram on his arm, and I'm going to get that intense uh, electric blue glow with Baharoth blue, and probably a bit of Sotek green. Um, so yeah, hold him up like this and go, that looks good. I'm happy with that. And we're going to have a bit of yellow, complementary colors, maybe a bit of orange, not sure at this stage. But we're ready to go, I reckon. Ready to get some paint on there, let's go. We're going to start with Abaddon Black and our large base brush and thin it right down on the wet palette. And all we're doing is smashing this over the entire model and giving it its first coat of black, really, because I don't count the prime. I never count the prime as the model's first color. I count it as laying down an adhesive layer for the paint to stick to. So make sure we get all of the nooks and crannies. Uh, we want to make sure that this is very solid, um, a very solid black coat. He slammed his axe into the road here, smashed into the ground because he can't hold it in his hand. His hands are a bit preoccupied. His right hand is holding his combi shooter and his left hand is operating his hologram. So to make this model a legal model, I wanted to add his huge chopper. So he's just popped it into the ground for now. He'll pick it up when he's ready. For the skin, we're going to use War Flesh. Thinning it right down on the wet palette so that we can do a couple of coats. All we're going to do is simply base coat all of the skin with this color. And when you're choosing a green for your orc skin, it's so important. It's, um, there's so many different ways you can paint an orc skin. Um, for this one, because he's a blood axe, I wanted to give his skin a bit of an army green color. And when I finished paint base coating 
um, all of the skin with wire flesh. I just loved it. I just almost, I love the color of it. I almost wanted to just leave, leave it as it is and not even touch it, not shade it and highlight it. Obviously, I'm not going to do that, but it's just, it, for me, it's just such a perfect skin color for an orc. And I'd love to paint an orc army and I'll definitely be using this skin color. Now we're going to paint all of the hard surface areas, all of the metal areas and the armor with Rhinox Hide. We're going to create huge battle damage on this and Rhinox Hide is the color that's going to be shining through when we create chips and scratches and things like that. You're going to see that Rhinox Hide. So we're going to paint this on all of the armor. Uh, we're going to paint it on the gun and even some on the boss pole. Basically anywhere where we're going to paint some some areas that we want that orc to look like he's painted over in, a, in his kind of crude orc way. And I hope you don't mind, but we're going to, we're going to take some lessons from my two-year-old daughter, Annabella. She's going to show you how to paint right oxide. Here we go. She's my prodigy. She gets personal lessons from me and she's going to be a master one day I reckon. She's two and she knows how to control a brush. She can draw. She knows the difference between an orc and a space marine. I wish I knew that when I was two. Anyway, back to me. We're painting the, the, the haft of the axe here with the runox hide as well. We're going to paint this later on to look like a really hard and worn wood. And we're going to definitely do two coats of this. Get a nice solid Rhinox hide color over all those hard surface areas. Next we're going to move on to Steel Legion Drab to paint most of the soft surface areas like the cloth, the pants here, and the straps. Again, this is an army kind of color. I chose Steel Legion Drab specifically to match that wire flesh green and kind of together they look like that classic army camo. Now we're also using this to base coat all of the bones and the teeth, the nails, as well as that purity seal that he has on his boss pole. Sometimes to make something orky, you've got to make it as unorky as possible. Moving on to lead belt chart, we're going to base coat some of the other metal areas. These are areas that aren't going to be covered in paint. Um, and this is just going to change up some of the metal areas. So we're not going to have all, all of the same kind of metal across the model. We're going to have two tones of metal because even though this Rhinox hide is not a metallic color, it's going to look like metal later on. It's going to contrast nicely with this uh, lead belcher. Uh, in the same way, we're going to paint his little hologram tech with lead belcher. We don't want to make that look all rusty. We want to just differentiate that from the rest of the model, uh, as well as the axe head, of course. I decided that the glyphs on his breastplate were a little bit too much. They were a bit busy and distracting, so I just chopped them off and um, repositioned this little part, this little skull here onto his shoulder pad and just shaved his breastplate down and cleaned it up and then repainted it with Rhinox hide. Then we can continue using Abaddon Black to paint the secondary cloth. So these little raggy bits, they need to be painted cloth, but I definitely don't want to be introducing a new color. Uh, you'll see why. We're going to paint those pants camo later on, so I don't want to have another color hanging around. So we're just hitting them with black. His little radar, sorry not his radar, his little walkie-talkie, his UHF radio, hit that with black as well. We can start adding a little bit of color. Um, we're going to start with the pipes up here using Avalanche Sunset. 
just for some of these pipes. We'll do a bit of a uh, yellow and black hazard stripe effect on these yellow pipes to add a little bit of detail and interest. For some of the other pipes we're going to use Celestra Grey, a nice neutral colour because we don't want to be adding like green and red and all sorts of stuff all sorts of colors next to that yellow. That yellow is already quite stark and in your face. So for the other pipes, we're just gonna keep them subdued and muted. Also paint the, the faces of these gauges here with Celestra Gray. And the last color for the pipes uh, will be Abaddon Black. So we're gonna have yellow, gray, and black. So they're going to look colourful and interesting, but they're not going to look too crazy. We will base coat all of the gold areas with Retributor armour. This little skull there and the little bullet hanging from his boss pole. As well as the tiny little bullets in his extended magazine. also base coated some of those little exposed wires on his axe. Using Doom Bull Brown, just quickly lay down a bit of colour on his tongue and the inside area of his mouth. Some of, the, some of the gums are showing. You can see a bit of that. Just smash it in there. And for the final stage of blocking in, we're just going to quickly touch up. Just touch up the bits of skin where there's a bit of rhinox hide overspill. Just go around the model and make sure it's nice and clean before you move on to the next stage. You can see I painted over those yellow pipes with a bit of Retributor armor there. I changed my mind about the yellow. But later on, I'm going to change my mind again and change them back to yellow. So just ignore those gold pipes. Now we're using Null Oil. Just put a whole bunch of it there on the palette. And I'm going to smash this over pretty much the entire model. Just put it everywhere, except don't go out of your way to put it over the Rhinox height because there's just there's really no point. We're going to literally just paint over this whole area later on um, so like I put a little bit there but I realized no, I don't need to do that anymore so just basically everywhere that's not rhinox hide but make sure you put it kind of um, where the where the areas butt up to the rhinox hide like so where the green skin meets the rhinox hide where these pants meet the rhinox hide um, pretty much just put it everywhere but just don't worry about Got trying to make it go on the Rhinox side. Uh, except for the shaft here, the axe handle, whatever. Um, just smash it all over that. We want a good coat over that. Once it's dry, we're ready to move on to the next stage. The next stage for this video is to roughly paint the skin. And I say roughly because we're not getting this to a finished state right now. We just want to paint it um, roughly and get an idea of how the colors are going to look and not put too much effort into it because we're going to probably make some um, mistakes and get some paint on it later on because uh, we're gonna be going a bit crazy later on with the armor. And there's so much armor and the skin is beneath the armor. So we're inevitably going to get some paint on there. So we're just roughly highlighting up using wire flesh again. The known oil obviously darkened it right down and stained the surface. So we're kind of just building that back up to that beautiful wire flesh color. It 
it's very thin as well we, we're still glazing it but we're just kind of just loosely doing it and not really paying too much attention to what we're doing just having a play just lightening it up so it's thin and you can see I'm just smashing it I'm just doing it as fast as I can not really paying too much attention to detail now we can switch to our fine brush and start defining the detail a little bit more and we're going to use Warboss Green for this thinned right down and we're going to start finding the highlights obviously the cheekbones but um, we really want to try and get some kind of wrinkles and gnarly sort of patterns happening on his skin going to use Druchi Violet to start adding some shades and you need to look at each muscle as its own kind of entity and shade each one towards the bottom so each little muscle is casting a shadow and will be darker on the bottom side of each muscle and lighter on the top so using the Druchi Violet, we can just start building that kind of effect up. So on the bottom of his elbow here, I'm applying a little bit of Druchi Violet, this little muscle here, just a little bit on the bottom, uh, especially on these back muscles, which I kind of see as a bit of a feature, his lats. Um, and then we can move over to his face. And each little sculpted bit on his face, each little muscle and bone and like in the ear here just start adding some of this druchy violet and it starts really coming to life and you get that cool light at the top and dark at the bottom effect on each muscle going to mix up a little bit of wa flesh with strachan green probably about 50 50 Let's call this Blood Axe Green. And just going to build up the highlights again. Sort of a bit of back and forth situation here. Shading down and then highlighting back up again. And each time we do it, we're introducing new colors and new depth to the face. Now, to all of the skin. But we're actually going to just focus on the face now. I'm not going to worry too much about the, the, the rest of the skin. The, the face is always going to have more attention to detail than, say, his elbow <laughs> or his knuckles or whatever. So for this video, I'm getting stuck into his face now. And honestly, it's a little bit of a mistake. Um, you'll see why later on, but pretty much I handle his face too much and the paint rubs off and I have to repaint it. But... Oh, it's a, it's a, it was a bit of a mistake on my part. Um, usually I would, I always try to keep the face as its own subsection. And especially on something like this, where the face is kind of buried inside his armor and it's tilted to the left. But for the conversion, I had to, I had to tilt his face to the left so that he's looking at his hologram. And you can see the little wrinkles in the back of his head there, which I had to sculpt. I had to do quite a bit of sculpting work to make him look like he was turning his head to the left rather than just like gluing it to the left and having a big open gap. So I had to sculpt it in there, which meant I couldn't keep it as a subsection. So anyway, we can see the blood axe green coming to life and building up his face, just very slowly adding layers, layer upon layer and intensify those layers where you want that color to be stronger. So in this case, obviously, it's the highlights and the tips of the nose and the tips of the gums and all that. The tops of each panel, the tops of each muscle and eyebrow and cheekbone and ridges and any just any kind of sculpted detail on his face 
just make sure it's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom for the most part. Now we're switching to Strachan Green by itself and further enhancing that that same technique and this adds a little bit more of a, a bright color to the skin. This is a process that takes a little while and you just build it up, build it up and up. Now we're going to introduce a bit of warmth to the skin using Kislev Flesh and we're definitely not going to go overboard with something like this. We're going to stick to the soft areas, things like the nose um, and the eyelids, the eye sockets, thing, parts around the eyes, um, even his ears and a little bit on his eyebrows. You could add some to the gums around these sorts of areas here. And it's very thin, so it has to be a very subtle, this kind of thing, otherwise it's not going to look good. I'm going to switch to Avalanche Sunset and just lay down a base color, a base coat for the eyes. Now the eyes are going to be red, but the whites of his eyes are actually going to be yellow. And we want to paint a pupil to be looking at this area here, which is his hologram. We want him to look like he's looking directly at the orc in the hologram and he's yelling at him. He's giving him commands. So using Evil Sun Scarlet, thin down with a bit of water. You can use Flow Improver if you've got it. Just paint some rough pupils facing that direction. And with all of my eyes, I just go back and forth until I get it right. I'm going back to Avalanche Sunset, back to Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, just back and forth, cleaning it up, gradually refining it until it looks right. I can never just paint an eye and it's just bang perfect the first time. I'm not like that. I can't do that. Um, I'm going to quickly switch to some Abaddon Black here and add a pupil inside the red iris. And now I'm just sort of tinting the the yellow to be a bit more red using some thin down Evil Sun Scarlet. This is thin down with the water. Got to clean up around the eye. And I'm using Kislev Flesh, but I've mixed it with a bit of green, whatever green I've got lying around on my palette because it's, it's a wet palette. So all of the greens that we've used to paint the skin, they're all still wet and active. So just mix a little bit of, tiny little bit of green into that Kislev flesh and glazing a little bit more Evil Sun Scarlet over the eyes to make them a little bit more red. Again, I'm just going back and forth, fixing up the pupil, changing the, changing the tone and the color of the eye, making it more red or less red. Now I'm just adding a little bit of a black line around the eye. Decided that I want the eye to be a little bit more pink uh, in the white, so adding a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh and I'll probably change it again later on. For now the eyes are good enough but no doubt we'll be tweaking them a bit later. Adding a little bit of Abaddon Black to some of the greens that are still active on the wet palette and just painting some of this into the, the darker areas of the skin. Building up some depth. We're using Tuscore Fur and we're painting this into the ear and some more around the eyes, just, just building that, 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 uh, that pinkiness up a little bit. It really comes to life when you add this sort of color to orc skin, showing attention to areas like the ears and the nose. This actually makes the ears look more transparent as well as the other areas of the skin. Um, like It makes the ears look like there's some light shining through them. 
sort of highlighting the blood vessels in the ear. So definitely worth doing this kind of thing on your orc skin. Back to Kislev Flesh to highlight those ears. Not just the ears, but the cheekbones and the lips and everywhere where we put some of that tusk or fur. But definitely don't want to go overboard. Just, just highlight them to pop them out. Using a bit of wa flesh thin down just to blend some of the some some of the the many colors that we've put in this face this face as you'll see is a bit of a battle uh, a bit of back and forth to get right throughout the entire painting process but that's fine you just tweak it as you go until you're happy with it look what am i doing i'm going back to the eye here adding a little bit of white scar Now I'm going to paint the teeth using Xandri dust to start the process. And we're going to add this sort of streaky line texture that you sort of that you see in some of these teeth and horns and bones and things. Just use your fine brush and take your time with it and start painting some thin lines towards the tip of the teeth. Make sure that paint on the palette is very thin. Got a few layers to do of this, so you don't want to have any crustiness building up. If you get a little bit dried on the end of your brush there, like I just did, I just pinch it and break it off. Now we're using Ushabti Bone, doing exactly the same thing, except just moving a little bit closer towards the end of the horn or the tooth. darkening the, the base of it down a little bit with Agrax Earthshade and helping to blend some of those colors together a little bit. And finally, going to use Screaming Skull to highlight the very tips. Well, Shabdi and Screaming Skull are very similar colors, but when you use them together like this, you can, you can really see the subtle difference that Screaming Skull makes when it's right on the tip. Using Rhinox Hide, we're just going to um, paint a few little nooks, little cuts and dents in the teeth, and enhance the very bottoms of each tooth where, where there's a little ridge or a little line that we created earlier. We're using Mournfang Brown here to paint his cigar. Then we're going to use Abaddon Black to paint the very tip and then while it's still wet, dip that paint into a bit of Eshen Grey and just sort of dab it and let the colors sort of blend together a little bit um, to create sort of like an ash effect. And we're going to do the same thing once that's dry using Evil Sun Scarlet and Fire Dragon Bright. And this obviously just creates the little, the little fiery glow at the end of his cigar his lit cigar. Now we're going to use Wa Flesh to start building up the rest of the skin in pretty much the same way as the face, only a lot less detailed and a lot less attention really. Um, just using it just to glaze, glaze it back up to a bit of a Wa Flesh kind of color which is like that cool army green color that we want for blood axes. And while we're painting this model, the word that I'm thinking about is blood axe. 
how can I make this more blood axe? And for almost every model I paint like this, I like to try and think of a word that's going to define that model. It might be sinister or badass or whatever it might be. For this model, it's simply blood axe because you can just extract so much character from thinking about the word blood axe. How can I make this skin look more blood axe? How can I make his face look more blood axe? You know, add a cigar to it, you know. What's his armor going to be like? He's going to be a space marine, you know. So put a suppressor on the end of his gun. What orc is going to put a suppressor on the end of his gun? A blood axe is. You know, a goth's not going to do that. They want their gun to be nice and loud. So while we're, while we're painting this model, we're always thinking about the word blood axe. Um, anyway, what we're doing here is exactly the same as what we did with the wire flesh. We're just using strack and green, just building up those highlights and pulling the tones and the, the hues closer towards the face. Again, we're not going to take this to a completely finished state. We're going to take it maybe to 70 or 80% and then finish it up at the end of the video. So anyway, here are the face and the rest of the skin, probably 70 to 80% complete. And that's good enough for now. I'm happy with the way the skin's looking, happy enough to progress to the next stage, which is to paint the armor. We're going to use masking fluid, which is horrible stuff. It's pretty much like a liquid latex kind of thing, but you know, you gotta use your craziest, oldest brush ever. Just dip it into it, sort of stipple it, almost like we're about to do a bit of dry brushing. Um, and I actually switch between a few different kinds of brushes. Um, but no matter what brush you're using, don't use your good brush. And what we're doing is going to start flicking this over the model uh, and not going to go overboard. Uh, but it's okay to get a big blob like that. Pretty much wherever you paint this, that is where there's going to be a chip where the paint is flaked off and you're going to see the Rhinox hide underneath it. So we want to focus this on areas like the edges and the corners of things. You don't want to put too much of it in the center of each panel, but you definitely want to get some of it um, up in the centers and just sort of stipple it here and there, flick it there, get some wide bits, some thin bits, some fat bits, just everything. Just get it as random as possible while trying to keep it to the edges as much as possible. You can see it starts getting a little bit stringy and that's kind of cool like some of the stringy bits create like a line like a scratch later on when we expose all of that metal area now we're going to use macrag blue to base coat over all of the armor and get that ultramarine or ultramarine sort of vibe happening and i'm always thinning my paints but with this I barely thinned it I actually really want it to be thick and ugly and fat and I want it to look like an orc has painted this on he's not done a nice job either so it's fine for this to be smashed all over and it's definitely not straight out of the pot like I definitely I definitely do thin it um, you can see it's quite thin here on the knee pad a little bit too thin but actually just layer up the the coats three or four coats of this even because what we're going to do later on is we're going to rub the the surface of this armor and that's going to peel off the the masking fluid and it's going to expose the runox hide beneath the blue paint and that works better when the blue paint is physically thick because it will create an, a natural shadow and real depth to the to the damage doing the same thing here on the gun with abaddon black we're going to create a bit of a modern warfare sort of gun here like almost like a realistic military or swat kind of gun like a black gun um, not the typical bolt gun metal um, lead belcher metal that you see most orcs uh, wielding 
Um, and, we're, and we're also going to try and steer away from rust. I don't want to put any rust on this model. I just want to try and get some orky metals without using rust. Here we're using wild flesh again to paint the the blood axe symbol. And we're going to paint that with some army camo later on. Layering up this blue, just get into it. We, we need to make some real depth here, so don't be shy with the paint. Once it's very dry, and I'm talking like give it an hour or two hours for that masking fluid to fully set, we're going to layer it with a heavy wash of null oil all over the blue armor, as well as the Wa Flesh um, Blood Axe icon on his boss pole. There's nothing to it. Basically, you just need to drown the model in in this. Um, don't need to get too much on the surface. On the, oh, sorry, on the on the main surfaces of the panels. We mostly want to focus it towards the shadows in the in the recesses. Um, and once that's dry, we're going to go back to Macrag Blue and glaze it to build it up again. That's why we don't want to put too much null oil all over the surfaces because. We don't want those surfaces looking dark and dull like they do right now. We want them, we basically want them to look like they're McCrag blue. And then they're going to be highlighted with lighter blues. And this is super rough as well. This is like when we painted the orc skin and we did that first, the first layer of highlighting um, when we. Remember we painted the skin wire flesh and did known oil and then highlighted back up with wire flesh but did it really rough and fast. We're doing exactly the same thing right now. Don't even worry if you miss an area, it doesn't matter. Always remember that this is an orc and it can be a little bit messy. And it looks absolutely disgusting. It looks horrible, especially with all of that masking fluid underneath. But that's okay. We're going to use Calgar Blue. We're going to start refining it now. Thinning it right down into a glaze. Going to do a little bit more finesse here. Going to get a bit of edge highlighting happening, as well as panel glazing. As I said before though, we're, we're painting orc here and that's something to remember. We don't need to make make this too beautiful and neat. And that's one of the things I love about painting orcs. It's just, you can just have a lot of fun with it. You don't need to worry too much. Like when you're painting a space marine, you really, you really need to think about what you're doing and make it look clean and professional. Sometimes with an orc, you can just bloody not give a shit, just do whatever you want get it into it get it messy and the other thing to remember is that we're painting severely battle damaged armor here so it doesn't matter if it looks a little bit messy and a lot of the armor is going to be scraped away anyway so we don't have to be too perfect anyway it's calgar blue and we're doing a little bit of finesse just highlighting the edges not going overboard do a, do a little bit too much, just wipe it away with your finger like that. Picking out the rivets. But uh, mostly just getting all of the edges like this. Um, and then once you do the edge, you can sort of blend it back into this, the surface of the armor. You can start creating a little bit of focus here and there, and a little bit of interest to the armor. I always like to highlight around the collar and try and frame the head a little bit, make the collar a little bit lighter than other areas of the armor. And the other thing I like to do at this stage is, um, we, we, because we've got all these bumps, all these lumps of of masking fluid 
creating all that texture, what we want to do later on is highlight the underside of each of the um, of the scratches and the big chunks of battle damage just to make it have even more depth. So when we actually have some physical lumps like this, um, we can kind of glaze up to it from underneath. So you sort of glaze up to the the bump from from below and that the, the, the glaze will kind of cling to the underside of that lump like this. You can see it sort of clinging to clinging to the bottom of those lumps and when we pull that lump we peel that off later on the um, this Calgar blue will, will remain behind on the underside of that scratch so you get a little bit of blending and a little bit of free highlighting from just from just um, glazing over the surface of the armor Once the Calgar blue is finished, uh, the model will look a little bit more interesting. You'll have some some blends and some highlights, and it's going to start looking a lot nicer. What I want to do though is make up a bit of a glaze or a wash using Lamian medium and Macrag blue, and we're going to smash this over all of the armor. I felt like the the known oil was a little bit dull and kind of making it look a bit gray and dark. This is going to brighten up the the shadow, the shadows, that known oil that's kind of darkening and desaturating that armor. This is going to saturate it up a little bit. And the mix is probably about um, three parts Lamy medium to one part. Macrag blue and you can see it's just kind of blended everything together a little bit. We've lost a lot of the highlights But I'm a lot happier with the depth the, the dark shadows They're they're much more blue or much more ultramarine looking blue and now we're going to uh, Do a little bit of freehand We're going to start with a blood axe Aquila I just Got out my sketchbook and sort of did an orky version of an Aquila. It's going to have the the blood axe symbol in the in the middle, so the two two axes crossing over, and then some crude orc style wings coming off the side. So he's going Space Marine. But he's not going full Space Marine. Never go full Space Marine. You may so here's his his um his wings and this is Celestra Grey and it's just very thin, just lightly sketching it out and then filling in in the middle. And I made a little bit of a mess on his on the left wing, the wing on the left there, but we're gonna easily fix that up later on. But it's really quite easy to do freehand on an orc. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit wonky, or if it's off-center, or if the lines aren't sharp. Um, it, it almost it doesn't really matter, like you can make it as neat or as messy as you want. There's kind of minimal planning um, with what I'm doing in um, on this on this shoulder pad, for example. I'm just, just decide I'm going to do a big arrow like on, um, on, a, on, a, on a space marine and here I'm not even looking at a space marine um, symbol. I'm just kind of remembering roughly how they look. It's, you know, it's just a big U, um, and because this is an orc that's done it, it's not a, it's not an imperial, I don't know, servitor or whatever, arm, armor designer or whatever. It's just some orc or a grot that's just done a big U, and then he's just gone and painted some axes in the middle of it because it's not full ultramarine as with all freehand it's a process of refinement you just start somewhere and then you gradually refine it so 
So if you make a mistake or if something's not sharp enough, you just go back to the previous color and fix up those details. We're going to paint that half of his knee pad uh, with a checkered, a checkered look. So just laid down a flat base of Celestra Grey. Now I'm using a mix of Calgar Blue and Macrag Blue. Just I've just mixed it up to kind of match the surface armor there. And I'm just fixing up that dodgy wing. It's easy. Now I'm kind of refining refining the lines around the axe. I wanted the axes to be separated from the wings just a little bit so you can you know you can obviously so obviously so you can see that the detail of the axes and that they are axes. They're going to translate. And I hope the design translates well and people know that it's two crossed axes in front of um, an orky style Aquila. Eagle wings. And I almost always use Celestra Grey when I'm painting white. Because, I mean, when you're looking at this right now, it looks white. But it's not, it's grey. It's just a very light grey. For the checks, we're just going to paint out some very thin lines, some horizontal lines, obviously, to start with. And then we're just going to paint the vertical lines. perpendicular so we get that checkered that checkered look I'm going to try and make those lines as thin as possible as well and then all we do is fill in every second cube sorry every second square And we're going to make sure that all of our freehand paints are very thin, even thinner than usual. So we make sure we need to get them thin and do as many coats as we need to. And now we're going back to Celestra Grey. So that's what I mean by its process of refinement. You're just constantly going back between the two colors until you're happy with it. And that's the same... Um, it's true with any kind of freehand, whether it's messy orc freehand or, you know, doing a perfect U on an actual ultramarine. Back to Celestra Grey on the checkers, checkers to, to make them sharper and make sure, because we painted painted that um, that blue line they're not quite they don't quite meet up properly so you just need to take away some of that initial blue line that exists on the white squares I'm going to thicken up this big arrow a little bit just make it a little bit wider and that's how the Celestra Grey looks on the freehand I'm going to just quickly go to some white scar, make it very thin, and just lighten up some of the highlights on the white areas. And really, I really don't want to go overboard with this. I like the look of the Celestra Grey. I just want to make it a little bit lighter, and you get that kind of painted look, just like to make it look like an orc has painted it. So you like these checkers here, they look like they've been painted with a paintbrush maybe you know, they're going from a really light white to um, the darker celestra gray white uh, it just makes it look like a little bit more crude we're going to begin adding some camo on the boss pole going to use Steel Legion Drab and all we do is start painting some little triangular shapes kind of going in a horizontal manner 
and then we switch to Zandri dust and paint really thin lines um, around each one of those triangle shapes that we created. And this can just be completely random, like they don't have to be nice neat triangles, they can be little wobbly s swirls or whatever. And refining the, the, the wah flesh areas, sharpening the detail a little bit. And this is really important to me that this is camo because this just says, this just shouts Blood Axe. It's a Blood Axe logo with camo on it. Right, now we've got to rub off the masking fluid. Here I'm using an old brush and you can see that this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. <laughs> It just, the stuff just won't come off. Um, I had a lot of trouble getting it off. The brush didn't work very well. So I tried, I tried lots of different tools. I tried this, which is one, one of my sculpting tools. Um, I think the problem is the masking fluid that I was using is a little bit old and dodgy. It's possibly not the best brand to be using, but I have used it a lot in the past but for small scale things like just a little bit on a shoulder pad or something like that I hadn't really used it on such a large scale but anyway we I just needed to experiment with different tools to find the best way of getting it off in the end I found that a toothpick was the way to go You can see that it just comes straight off with a toothpick, but it does still cling to it a little bit. Like there's like a tiny little bit where it's clinging on for dear life and it takes a little while to get it off, but it's okay. The, um, the effect looks amazing, so it was worth it in the end, but it did just take longer than I wanted it to take. Um, but the main problem that this caused is that I, I had to handle the model way too much and put a lot of pressure because when I'm scraping this with the with the toothpick here, I'm scraping it hard. Man, I'm like, I'm not being gentle. I'm like ripping it off. I'm like, okay, it's been an hour and a half, mate. Get off this armor now. <laughs> so what I ended up doing was pretty much wrecking the face, all the painting that I'd done on the face. That's all going to be rubbed off by the time that you see all of this battle damage peeled off when that's done the face is the face is looking horrible again so i need to repaint the face i also found that the damage took off a little bit too much of this design on the front and it just didn't look like anything so just going to use a little bit more celestra gray and reapply some of the design just so that it continues to read and translate the way it's supposed to so I'm adding a bit more of the wing and fixing up the axes so that the axes are complete. Now we're using Agrax Earthshade and this is a very controlled wash. We're applying this to all of the recesses, only on the recesses, so we're not going to go all over the, all over the surface of the armor. So just in the recesses and around rivets between panels, as well as here and there between the battle damage. If you can sort of flood it into the battle damage, it will cling to the out to the um, to the border of the battle damage and enhance it, and it'll create like even more shadow and depth. We're also going to put some on some of the white areas, so some of the surface where we want it to look a little bit dirty. This will end up looking sort of like rusty water dripping out of the battle damage or dirty water dripping out of the battle damage and and um, dripping over the surface of the armor across the blue across the white just wherever we think it needs it and this is actually really fun doing this because it starts really coming to life when you put some of this agrax earth shade into 
the battle damaged areas, the big chips, they look really good. As well as obviously going in between the cracks, between the cracks of the uh, the armor between each panel, it really it really gives it the definition they need. So I mentioned before, I really wanted to try and stay away from rust. It was very tempting to just flood rust all over an orc, but I kind of challenged myself to try and make some orc looking metal without actually using rust. So there's going to be no orange on the metal. I just want the, the metal to look dirty and maybe oily and dark. And believe it or not, we're going to use some colored pencils to do some edge highlighting. These are good quality pencils. They're pretty much the best you can get. They're Faber-Castell. Um, and I've just selected a few different kinds of blues. This one kind of looks like Calgar blue, which is sort of our main edge highlight color for the armor. And once you give this kind of edge highlighting with colored pencils a go, it's going to blow your mind, it's going to rock your socks because it's just a new world of edge highlighting. You can get really interesting effects and, and see here how we're just colouring in the, the, um, the, bottom, the bottom edge of the battle damage, giving it more depth. And because this is, the, the tip of, a pe of the pencil is hard and it's not, it's not a liquid format like paint, it's not going to seep into the gaps. It's only ever going to stay on the, on the edges and, and the, the raised surfaces. So we, we don't have to ever worry about accidentally putting too much paint on and having it flood into the recesses and losing all of that depth on the battle damage there. And you can also, you can also just color in like you're using a pencil, like you can, you can get some blending and some fades. Um, or you can just straight up do a hard edge highlight. You can do some scribbles and scratches. Um, it, it, it makes amazing scratches because it can be, it, you can get it really fine and quite random as well. Doing some scratches across the surface of the armor there. It's really fun. Just I'm just having fun with this. I'm having so much fun. And it starts looking amazing and coming to life. And watch how quickly quickly we can do these highlights here in the holes. We do need to um, be careful about handling the model though, from now on, because the the pencil needs to be sealed later. Um, and it, it, if you touch it without sealing it, it can rub off and it rubs off fairly easily. So you can see that I've kind of pushed the two pieces of wire that are in his, in his feet there, sort of pushed them together so I can make sure that I'm holding on to that. Look at me just attacking the model there, just stabbing it with the pencil and creating some random scratches. Awesome stuff. And like I was saying before, how the pencil kind of catches all of the raised edges like that. So you can you almost get a bit of a dry brushing sort of action going. Now I'm switching to a lead pencil. And this is going to create um, silver. Because lead pencil is silver, obviously. And we're using this on the gun and it's just, it, it, like I said, it's just amazing. It just creates such sharp and quick and precise lines. You just can't go wrong with it. And you could use this method for highlighting um, a bolt rifle or something, like the gray, the black parts on the bolt rifle. You can, you, you'd switch this pencil to a gray pencil if you just wanted to highlight sort of like a standard black color. Not like what we're doing here on, on this gun. We're making it sort of like a black metal color. So we need, to, we need to use metallics. But if you want just a standard black, 
you could be using a, a gray pencil and doing really nice neat sharp edge highlights give it a go also I'm doing his little radio here his little walkie talkie just so that that matches up with the same kind of material as the gun which is that black metal realistic gun sort of color and you saw that we put some lead pencil on the Rhinox hide on the armor as well not too much just a little bit just to give it a bit of a flash here and there make it look a little more metallic righto now we got to clean up the face got to fix it up it all got rubbed off so um, we're just going to pretty much do what we did before I'm not going to go into the detail of how to do it it's, it's pretty much all the same colors that we did the first time just fixing it all up just adding a bit of tusk or fur around these eyes one thing I'm doing now though is glazing over the eyes with Lamenta's yellow just to make the make the whites of the eyes look a bit more yellow again and here's the face all cleaned up again right now we're going to paint his camo pants I'm going to use wire flesh which is our our blood axe army green color using this we're going to paint some triangular shapes just random shapes remembering that this this is orc camo so it doesn't matter if they look a bit wonky and weird just some triangular green shapes then we line them with Xandri dust just the same way that we did on the blood axe icon on his boss pole only thing that's going on here is I'm actually using Zamesi Desert which is the wrong color I just picked that picked up the wrong bottle and I didn't realize that it was looking a bit too yellow until I'd finished so here I am now using Xandri dust and painting over it the way it should be there we are right now it's time to add some shadows to it using null and oil just going to glaze it over the entire surface of the pants but we will double up or even triple up um, in the folds just add a little bit more null oil in the folds there now we need to go back over the camo designs on the raised surfaces so we're using wire flesh again just to brighten up the green parts where where it's um, not in the recesses so just on the raised surfaces Then we do the same thing with Zandri dust, just painting the lines that are on the raised surfaces, not going into where it's a bit darker and shadowed. We want to keep that darkened because the null oil has stained those surfaces. So just on the top of the leg and the top of the folds, that's fine. now of course we're doing the same thing with the brown part of the pants going back to the base color which is steel legion drab doing exactly the same and just keeping it to the tops of the folds now we're going to paint some stitches in this seam which is where the two halves of the legs were glued together and we can still see the join so we're painting some rhinox hide down the middle of it and making it look even more obvious 
then we're going to paint some run oxide stitches going across uh, whoops and if you do that if you make a mistake like that don't worry we'll just clean it up with a bit of wire flesh and move on it's a little bit tricky to do this neatly because of the angle of the legs it's hard to kind of get in there but it's okay we make do now we're going to use Zandrew dust and paint inside each one of those run oxide stitches again if you make any mistakes doing this kind of thing don't stress out it's just the way it goes and we can just we can just touch it up with the surrounding colors and Bob's your uncle it's easy nothing at all to worry about Now we're going to use Nuln Oil to paint around the stitches, just like pretty roughly. We're just kind of creating a bit of shadow in there, darkening it up a bit. And there we are, the finished stitches, disguising that dodgy join in it. So it's something you'd normally try and hide and pretend it doesn't exist, but we've, we've done the opposite and, and made it a bit of a feature. Right, now let's paint the black areas. Just do a quick clean up using Abaddon Black. And as I mentioned earlier, these these rags, they, they've got to be black, man. Like, we, we don't want to be introducing any new colors here, and especially right next to the blue armor and that those camo pants. I mean, imagine if we painted these this a light brown color, it's just going to clash with the pants. Um, so, painting something black is always a good option if you just don't want to put a new color in there. So we're going to use Skaven Black Dinge to highlight it, thin it down to a nice thin consistency and start glazing it over the over the surface of the black the black cloth, sticking mostly towards the bottom and directing it towards the bottom because we're going to make it lighter at the bottom with the with the highlights to come. Skaven Blight Dinge is a good color because it's got a bit of a tiny little bit of brown in it so it's good for painting black cloth or raggy black cloth just gives a little bit of warmth to that gray Dawnstone is next doing exactly the same thing except moving a little bit closer towards the bottom of each little bit of rag And this is a bit of rag on an orc, so we don't need to worry about making this look too perfect, to be honest. Even if it looks a little bit grey, or if it looks not quite black. Like, usually you want to be really careful when you're highlighting black and don't go overboard with the greys, because black can very easily start looking grey and not black. But with this, I don't even mind if it goes a little bit grey. as long as it's just mostly black. Got to turn it upside down sometimes just to get the right angle, don't you? Sometimes that makes all the difference. You just can't quite get something and you turn it upside down and then it's all of a sudden super easy. Administratum Grey is the final color that we're going to use for the black. And obviously we're going to get a little bit closer towards the bottom, creating that cool blend or the fade. And less is more with this color. We definitely don't want to be doing this over the surface, um, just towards the tips, just creating almost like a little dot on the end of it. And notice that I'm not even touching that little black rubber coil on his walkie-talkie. I'm just going to leave that black. I'm not even going to highlight it. Steel Legion Drab is up next for the beginning of the strapping. All we're doing here is kind of reapplying a bit of color to the straps. They've already been painted steel each and drab, then they've had null oil. Now we're just cleaning it up a little bit and 
brightening up that Steel Legion drab. And we're not going to go around the underside of the straps. The underside of the straps on this model for now are completely finished. Um, we want them to look dark and we want to kind of create a bit of a fade, a bit of a blend so that they look lighter at the tops of the straps as they kind of wrap around the forearms. So you can see here we're just painting the steel legion drab on the tops and I'm not even going to go, I'm not even going to venture in the underside. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing, only this time using Zandri Dust. And just getting a bit closer towards the tops of each strap. Or wherever we want the highlights to be. So on the gun handle here, it's down the center. Down the center of the handle. As always, our paint is thinned down and we're just glazing it. Not going straight out of the pot. With all of your glazing, it's really up to you about how thin you want the paint to be versus how fast you want the job done. So you can always make the job faster by making the paint less thin, but the, the blends are gonna be less smooth. And so the thinner the paint is, the smoother it will look, but the longer it will take. Finally, we're going to use Ushabdi Bone for our, for our last highlight on these straps. Again, we're sticking to the center, but we're also going to get them a little bit on the edge, so creating a bit of an edge highlight on those straps. Again, not wrapping all the way around. We don't want to go putting a Ushabdi Bone on the underside of the straps because that's going to it's going to wreck the effect that it's dark underneath there and it's lighter on the top so keep just what we're doing here keeping those edge highlights to the center and the tops of the straps as they wrap around the arm they go on the underside you can do a little bit of stippling action as well um, creating a bit of like tears like a tearing effect on some of the straps to make them look a little bit raggy it's up to you. But here we are, the finished straps. Good old fashioned brown straps on an orc. Now we've got to paint the purity seal. And we're just going to glaze it with Zandri dust. Simple as that. I'm going to direct most of my blends downwards. So like each panel of this purity seal will be lighter at the bottom and darker at the top. We are also going to do his fingernails and we'll make these lighter towards the tip of each nail, darker at the base. Now I need to fix up his teeth as well because they were severely damaged along with the face. Using your shabdi bone next, gonna just enhance the blending as I said making it lighter towards the bottom of each little section on the purity seal and by section I mean where it folds and you sort of like enter a new little bit of the of the purity seal so like right there that's one that's the bottom of one panel this is the bottom of another panel and this is the bottom of another panel here Shabdi bone again still on the fingertips the fingernail tips can't forget his little trigger finger nail which is hiding there behind the trigger as well as his teeth now I kind of opted away from that um that streakiness that I originally had on the teeth. I, well, I didn't opt away from it. I just sort of subdued it a little bit and covered it up to make it a little, a little bit more smooth. Now we're using Screaming Skull, enhancing the highlights. 
doing a little ping on the end of the nails. And you can really see the difference that Screaming Skull makes, even painted over Ushabdi Bone, two colours that are almost indistinguishable when you're just looking at the pot. But when you actually put them together and paint them together, and you, you highlight them, highlight that Ushabdi Bone with Screaming Skull, it actually really looks good. I'm going to use Rhinox Hide to paint some script on the purity seal. Now I've thinned the paint right down, but that makes it go a little bit transparent. So I sometimes add a little bit of Apodon Black to the mix too. Now we're going to paint the, the little wax seal on the purity seal using Tuscor fur and glazing it. And remember that this has been painted Rhinox Hide and it's had a null oil wash. Once that Tuscor fur is done, we're going to just do a Druchi Violet wash. Druchi Violet looks beautiful over Tuscor fur. And we're going to finally highlight it with just a bit of Kislev flesh, thinned right down so it's very, very thin and watery. As always, when, when it's that thin, you've got to wipe the brush so that the brush isn't soaked and it's not going to flood out everywhere. We just want it very watery because we don't want to really apply too much pale color to it. We just want to lighten that tusk or fur. And finally, we're going to just add some Agrax Earth Shade on the parchment of the Purity Seal, just this paper section, just to make it look a bit darker and dirtier. Focusing it towards, mostly towards the top there, where it meets the, the wax bit, and just any shadows like this. Super easy. We're also going to add a few coats of Agrax to the head of the bullet, the projectile part of this bullet hanging from his boss pole. Now I'm going to paint his Imperial Canteen, starting with Runox Hide, and we're painting that little leather bit that wraps around. Then we'll paint the canteen part, the bulk of the um, drink bottle with Wa Flesh. Remember, this is our army green color, our Blood Axe army green color. Guns in the way a little bit there, sorry about that. Pick out the little details, the little metal details like these studs with lead belcher, as well as this chain the chain that's making it hanging from his belt. Then we can highlight the leather parts with Steel Legion Drab. Also, I'm going to highlight or almost repaint the um, the paper part of his cigar. Originally it was Mournfang Brown and I'm just painting it Steel Legion Drab now or just highlighting it with Steel Legion Drab to change it to a more of more of that army brown color. The Mournfang Brown was a little bit out of place, a little bit too red. Going back to our lead pencil to highlight the middle parts. Could just get out some Stormhouse Silver and be done with it, but we're on a mission with these pencils, aren't we? Just using a bit of Abaddon Black to clean up. Add a little bit of depth and darkness. Canteen is finished. Remember when I said I repainted this pipe um, Retributor Armor? Well, now I'm just fixing it back up to Avalanche Sunset. 
And I want to add a little bit of yellow to this side. So I'm just going to add a little random warning sign, warning symbol on his armor. Like he's made this out of some scrap that he's found in a factory or something. Going to use Abaddon Black to paint the details inside this yellow triangle. Just start off with a little line to paint um, the exclamation mark. Then line the outside of the triangle very finely so that it kind of looks like that. Now we can get into painting some hazard stripes, some yellow and black stripes. We just got to start by painting some little lines on an angle and don't worry about painting these lines all the way around the circumference of the pipe to begin with. See so just like this, I'm just sticking to one edge of it so I can kind of get the thickness of them and the angle of them right and then I just flip it over like this and then start painting the tops and start bringing them around, bringing those stripes around. There's nothing to it, those are really easy. And then we're going to use Screaming Skull thinned right down, super thin, very watery, and running it along the top edge of the pipe. So the Screaming Skull is a good color because it's going to highlight nicely over the yellow and it's going to highlight nicely over the black. So rather than having to highlight each individual little black bit and each individual little yellow bit, you just run this over the top of the whole thing and and it, then it's done. Does the lot in one go. Took me about one minute to highlight this whole pipe. I want to make some scratches on this little warning sign. So just getting a toothpick and just lightly rubbing it and scratching the paint off very carefully. And this is actually another another way of making battle damage by the way you can just grab a toothpick on any paint job that you've done if you want to put some really subtle scratches just going to use some celestra gray and begin painting the gauges on his hologram device we've already painted them celestra gray and then they've been done with some null oil now we're brightening them back up and we've kind of been doing this throughout the whole miniature base coating something and then doing a null oil once over and then using that base color to brighten it back up again leaving the null oil in the recesses while well, we've got the celestra gray out we're going to highlight these pipes that we painted Celestra Grey way back at the start. And we're also going to thin it right down to, to highlight the black ones. Just don't go overboard with the black ones so they look a little bit different to the to the grey ones. Now of course this orc is running his technology in the red so we've got to we've got to paint some evil sun scarlet in the gauges to make it look like he's maxing out his technology like this thing could be ready to blow up at any moment just have to thin down the evil sun scarlet and take the take our time with it and use our finest brush just gradually add a little bit by a bit to try and get that red zone finally we can use Stormhost silver to highlight all of the metal areas and I mentioned this earlier but I wanted to have a few different kinds of metals on this orc and the metal on this hologram device I want I wanted it to be a little bit lighter and cleaner looking so we've got the black metal of the gun, we've got the Rhinox hide dirty metal showing through the armor, 
we've got some gold and then we've got this clean metal now this here is where the projection of the hologram is going to originate from so that is that's where the light source is going to be so when we're highlighting this metal we want to try and make it lighter towards that side so all of these little pieces of metal wherever they face that projection point or whatever wherever the hologram is going to be coming from that's where we're going to put our osl later on so we're going to make that those sides a little bit lighter with the storm host silver going to get some ceramite white and pretty much make it into like almost a wash just with water and we're just going to use it to flood into this area this little circle and because it's so thin look at how easy it is the water the water just does the work for us and makes a perfect circle and all we have to do is do that two more times and then it's done we're going to use a vallejo model air color called bright brass and we can use this to highlight all the gold areas i'm starting to love this color it's becoming my favorite color for highlighting gold got his gold tooth here which is just a normal tooth i just decided to paint that one gold i'm going to paint the shells the exposed shells here in his um, his magazine now let's get into his base we'll start with Mechanicus Standard Grey do a stool once over all over the base we're going to paint this to look like a road kind of um, inspired by Mad Max Orcs are very Mad Max in my opinion. When I get to this dirt area, I just sort of dry brush it and kind of create a little bit of a, of a blend where it, so it doesn't just go from solid gray to, you know, not solid gray. Just get a bit of a blend happening. Now hit it with some Nuln oil, just drench it in Nuln oil. Now we can dry brush it and we're going to start with Skaven Blight Dinge just going to dry brush this all over the road and the dirt then straight into some Dawnstone when we're dry brushing something like this you don't want to just go one way you want to kind of do circular circular motions and up down motions left right motions you want to kind of get every angle so don't just go like one angle left to right now we're going to use administratum gray doing the same thing dry brushing this gravel in the road and usually i with something like this i'll start with the gravel and then venture off into the road like this just so i'm not going to accidentally hit the road with way too much paint on it and then you're going to see like a big streak so we're going to actually paint over this gravel later on so it doesn't matter so much if i put too much paint on there also want to focus more of the highlights around those cracks to make the road lines just cutting up some thin strips of masking tape just laying this down over the road finding a good angle where it's not going to interfere it's not going to um, be too distracting I only want a little bit of the line showing so I've just made it close to the edge so fold them fold these down get them out of the way and press the masking tape down so it's kind of hard up against the road and then we're going to use Avalanche Sunset mixed with a little bit of screaming skull and we're going to use um, our dry brush and just heavily dry brush this over where the lines are exposed and the reason i don't want to just paint this or airbrush it is because i want it to look like it's a really old road and like some bits of gravel have um, or some bits of the painted gravel have sort of broken and fallen away and you can see 
you can see some like unpainted gravel in between some of the painted bits if that makes sense so just by dry brushing it like this really heavily we can we can get that sort of effect that old effect and when we peel it off we've got an instant road and it looks kind of wonky and a little bit faded and old that's what I wanted now let's paint the axe head we're going to thin down some Abaddon black and glaze this over the metal and we're going to do it in sort of an opposite 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 type thing so we'll make it darker up here on this panel the top left of this panel and on that bottom panel where it's smashing into the ground we're going to make it darker on the bottom right so top left on this panel is dark and bottom right on the other panel that's smashing into the ground is dark so when the when the two parts of the axe meet up you get really good contrast the dark will meet the light and we're going to do the same thing on the on this side of the axe on the back of the axe once that's done and we've done a few layers we're going to switch to lead belcher and do exactly the same thing but in the opposite direction so we're enhancing the light sections instead of the dark sections and you can see how watery it is there that's actually a little bit too watery i'd say um, but you know it just means that i've got to do more layers doesn't mean it's going to not work it's going to take longer but really it's going to look better and you always push the paint in the direction where you want it to be strongest because when when the brush leaves the model it will always leave a little collection of paint like a little puddle and it will always be stronger and don't neglect things like this like the undersides of the axe and those little cutouts like you can see them especially on an orc axe where it's really thick doing the same thing with stormhost silver now but we're just doing a much smaller area a much more focused area just to push the highlights and especially here when we're on, on the on this point of the axe we want that to be really sharp and pointy and bright and these little things here we'll just get a little bit of highlighting on there show them a bit of attention i almost wrecked this axe when i was gluing it to the base you might be able to see a bunch of dodginess right around here um, that's because when I was gluing it to the base, uh, a whole pile of super glue spilled out all over that axe head. Um, and I mean like a lot, it flooded, super glue flooded all over the axe. So I got my finger and tr quickly tried to wipe it, but there was so much, so much super glue that my finger stuck to the axe instantly and I just ripped it off and I left finger marks and like, it was not pretty, but I tried to clean it up as best as I could, but in the end, doesn't really matter too much because the roughness just kind of adds adds to a little bit of the story it's an orc axe anyway so it's a little bit rough but not too rough and here we go the, the metal is almost finished and remember we're resisting putting any rust on it we're just trying to make kind of an orky looking metal without rust we gotta just quickly edge highlight it all using our lead pencil again We can put some scratches and little nicks and little dents and things like that, just like we did on the armor. And give lots of character to this axe. Doing some little flicks there, which makes some little scratches. Give this little ring a quick once over. And once this done we're going to paint we're going to paint those straps as well in the same way that we painted the straps on the arm so i'm not going to show that but it's exactly the same as how we did the other ones we're going to paint this wood to look 
like a really old hardwood that's been handled a lot and it's just really old like it's almost like a fairly heirloom for this orc so we're using steel legion drab and all we're doing is just edge highlighting along all of these little bumps and ridges and the little cutouts of the wood this this wood that we're going to do is actually so easy we're not going to put much technique into it at all but it's going to look good so that's all we need to do edge highlight that that wood just like that and then we're going to drown it with some agrax and that is going to blend blend that steel legion drab out a little bit and remember before we did all this we base coated this um, handle with rhinox hide and then we did null oil over it so here's how it looks when the agrax earth shade is dried and now our final step is to just paint some very small dots of Kislev flesh where some of those Steel Legion drab lines intersect. So pretty much wherever there's like a little point or a corner, we're just gonna put a little bit of thin down Kislev flesh. Less is more with this. You don't wanna go overboard. You can add a few little scratches and um, nooks and things and there we go there's that's it that's the finished uh, handle that's how you paint wood to make it look like it's really old and hard and dark let's paint a skull we're going to start off with Bane Blade Brown. Thin it right down and begin finding where the highlights are. And because this skull is going to be sort of in the desert, I wanted to make it sort of like a just a standard bone color, like a sun bleached kind of skull. Normally I'm adding, you know, um, special colors to my bones, like my skulls and stuff. Um, like on the Death Guard models, I like to make them kind of look kind of yellowy and sickly. I'm a Night Lord. I painted the bones, the skulls to look kind of blue and cold. Um, but for this one, I just want a standard bone color just so it's, so it looks like it's dried out in the sun I'm using your shabdi bone here. And now we're, we're pushing the highlights and you can see I sort of push, push this glaze upwards like this and then on the on the other side I push it back towards that center making it making it brighter there but also making it blend nicely together now the light source for this for this fella is just going to be coming from the top like the top right so that's the direction that most of the highlights are going to be facing And I always make sure that um, the highlights, the glazing on the bones is as smooth as possible because bones can just look amazing when they're, when they're just nice and smooth. Now we're going to use our screaming skull for the final highlights. Pinging the tips of the teeth, the tips of the cheeks here and on the eyebrows. underneath the eye sockets and we'll just run a line along this the ridge of this skull and it really comes to life with this screaming skull blending out that line a little bit here we go the skull is now finished and for a standard bone colored skull I'm really happy with it let's make some pigments we're going to use some soft pastels and you just get a bit like this and get your scalpel and just start scraping it onto your palette and you can just make your own pigments like this by getting a bit of that one 
and we'll get a bit of this brown one here mix some of that into it mix it up I'm also going to put some of that orange one up there under my hand I'm um, going to put some of that on in its own little pile later on mix a little bit of water with it actually mix a lot of water with it as my buddy Jake says turn this into dirty water so it's it's mostly water and you just add a little bit of pigment like this and we're just starting to create a bit of um, a bit of a desert looking dirt And it's just a process of building it up because it's very thin. As I said, it's almost it's just like dirty water. And then you just keep you just keep blending it, blending it, um, adding a little bit more of the pigment here. That's a bit of dry pigment, a bit of dry orange pigment. I didn't want to mix that together. I want to keep that separate so that you get some interesting textures when you when you touch that to the surface here because that surface is still soaked from the from the dirty water. So once the brush touches that, all of that dry pigment kind of seeps out and creates interesting effects. You want to fade it out a little bit onto the road as well. So there's not just this clean road and then all of a sudden dirt. You want some of that road to have a bit of that brown stain to it as well. Some over here, over the, over the yellow lines, um, over there in the, in the little cracks and things. We don't need to go overboard with it on the road, but I, I think you definitely need to have a little bit of a little bit of brown on there. I'm going to thin down some Abaddon black and enhance the darkness of these cracks. When you make the Abaddon black into sort of a wash, you can just sort of touch the brush in there, and it will the detail will will um, show up when the when the paint floods out into it. So the, the, the wash or the wetness of the paint will do the work for you. And it will just flood and fill in, fill up those gaps. I'm going to use some Screaming Skull to add a little bit of finesse to these cracks. Um, so previously they'd only been dry brushed. So what we want to do is fancy them up a little bit and show them a little bit of attention. We don't have to do too much to them. All we're going to do is just edge highlight them and then blend blend them out a little bit just to make them pop out and look brighter. Um, make it look like there's just been some crazy impact and draw our attention to that impact because that axe has been slammed into the ground and the cracks have just all of a sudden cracked. They're not old cracks. So we're going to use bright brass to highlight these little gold bits just like we did with the other gold bits on the model have a go at this here's some crap I found yeah I'm one of those dudes that walks around in the bush picking up sticks and going oh yeah I could use this I could use this on a Weimar base or like walking along the beach picking up crap and going oh yeah look at that that's a little shrub anyway most of this stuff is roots just like little bits of roots or tiny sticks or real tiny leaves there's anything that I can find and I just collect it and here I'm just kind of scattering it around on the base and going oh yeah this is going to look good this is going to create a little bit of debris and make that sort of post-apocalyptic environment now it's very fiddly but we've got to just get some little bits of PVA glue with a toothpick and very clumsily try and get some get some of these little roots and these little sticks and things and try and get it in in that um, little puddle of glue um, and this is the music I'm listening to while trying to do that uh, I don't think it's helping me to not be clumsy but anyway we just got to keep trying and trying to just get a bit of bit of that crap and stick it on the base and when we finally get that stuck down do another little puddle of glue and add another one another stick until it looks like basically like this Now we're ready to clip the model off the wires and attach them to the base. And it's an exciting moment.
we just need to check to see if he fits in the pre-drilled holes uh, and it looks like we need to bend the wires out a little bit and after a bit of tweaking with bending the wires out we can push him in we're going to dry fit him just to make sure um, everything looks okay and we're happy with the placement of all of those sticks and I'm pretty happy with it how it looks so now we can take it off and smash a whole bunch of super glue on his feet and around the pins and quickly push it in there before the glue dries while he's half half pushed in make sure everything's all good do a quick check before the glue sets push it down if we need to like there, like there we need to push that left leg down hold it down nice and firm and then we can bend these wires and then it's that's going to that's going to hold it in place it's not going to go anywhere just going to have to use the back of a paintbrush or something to push this wire down once those have been pushed down smash some more super glue onto them just so that it was really not going anywhere and already you can see that he's solid solid as a brick I remember way back I said that the skin was only going to be like 80% finished well now we can finally finish off that skin just going to do some very small little details using war boss green here and that's going to actually brighten the skin up a little bit and saturate it a little bit more um, so I wanted to leave that kind of thing till the end so I can kind of look at the model and go yeah okay his head needs to be a little bit brighter because it's getting a bit lost and we need something to help draw more attention to his head so now we're using Strachan green and that's going to do the same thing that's going to keep brightening up that face a little bit more when you layer some Strachan green over Warboss green it gets pretty intense and all we're doing is just adding a bit of texture and a bit of extra highlighting here popping out the details on his ear lobes all those sorts of tiny little things that we didn't really bother to do before because there's not much point um, now we can finally do those and watch his face really come to life and I'm actually going to begin stippling here so you can you can create blends and fades by stippling so when you want the color to be strongest you do more dots and where you want the color to be less strong you do less dots it also creates a cool texture so you're going to do some of that stippling of Strachan green on the rest of the um, skin as well so we're doing a little bit here on the on the arm and the elbow his triceps all those little muscles remembering that we've got to try and keep those highlights to the top sides of each muscle no point putting any of this Strachan green down in the shadows you see we're just stippling it and we're just doing dots and it's just going to create interesting texture but you can also get a little bit of um, a little bit of that Strachan green and thin it down like this and glaze it over those dots if you get a little bit too carried away and sometimes you make the dots look a bit too textured so you can just very lightly glaze back over it and that sort of blends them all together a little bit adding a little bit of highlights to the uh, the knuckles there as well as here on the top of this part of his muscle on his traps sorry his lats latissimus dorsi I'm going to use some Krieg Khaki 
for our final highlight of the skin. And um, the less is more with this. As with most of the most of the final highlights of anything that I do, the very last highlight that you do, less is more with that. I'm gonna highlight this little vein on his arm here. Just let let that kind of pop out a little bit. Also going to paint some kind of lines, some sort of little wrinkles on his elbow here. Just adding some little details like that in these masses of big flat areas that kind of helps to bring the character to life a little bit. Back to tusk or fur and we're enhancing that cool glowing skin look here. Put too much on, just switch to another brush and feather it out. But I really like doing this to ears and you make them look like the sun's glowing through them. And we'll just go and add some more under his eyes as well and around his nose. It's starting to look really good now, I reckon. I'm going to go and thin that tusk or fur down even further and glaze it over his knuckles um, and his elbow. Those are points where um, the skin stretches over, over the bone and makes those areas a little bit more transparent. You can see the blood vessels changing the color a little bit there. These knuckles too. So we lightened them before with Creed Khaki and um, now we're sort of tinting them to a bit more of a pink color. Working on that ear. His skin is now complete. It was the same sort of concept with the armor. I didn't want to take that to 100% completion either. So um, let's complete that now using um, Fenrisian gray to start with. And we're enhancing all of the highlights that we already did with the pencils earlier on. But inevitably, when you gotta, when you gotta handle the model, you're gonna, that, that's, some of that's gonna rub off. So we're using this to pop out some of those highlights again and as well as highlighting under the de battle damage here on the undersides of these battle damage you can just watch it come to life when we do this that makes it seem even um, even deeper giving it a lot of character some of those rivets there and this Fenrisian grey has been thinned down of course making it easier to flow off the brush, but not so thin that it's like a wash or, or not even really a glaze. Now we're going to use Ulthuan Grey to hit their very corners. And I really love doing little highlights like this, like the little tiny dots at the end. It's so rewarding. You're just like, yeah, I'll put a dot here, put a dot there. It's just magic. Yeah, and that battle damage is starting to look super cool now. Just working our way around the model, doing a little bit here and a little bit there. Just working it, working it, baby. Got to put a little bit on the backpack here, show a bit of attention to that. 
do too much and grab your other brush and feather it out just like that and you get a bit of a free blend Rightio, we're going to paint the, the lens on his on his ACOG scope, starting with Avalan Sunset. Got to do two thin coats. Then we're going to thin down some Rhinox Hide into a glaze using water and blend this towards the top right hand corner of the lens. We're going to make it darker up there. Switch to Abaddon Black and do exactly the same thing. And we're going to do two or three coats of this, getting just edging closer and closer towards that top right hand corner. And once that's done, we'll use some Screaming Skull in the bottom left corner. Just creating like a like a little crescent shape. Then we'll mix some Screaming Skull with Avalan Sunset and sort of blend some of those some of those colours together a little bit. Just make it look a little bit smoother. Finally we're gonna use white scar to paint a little white dot in the top right hand corner. Once we've done that, wipe off all that paint, put a little bit of water with the brush and just glaze a tiny little bit more highlight in the bottom left corner. And that's it, the lens is done. It's super easy. Now, this stuff is amazing. This carbon black pigment by Vallejo. I'm gonna use this to um, intensify some of the shadows over the whole model as well as make him look dirtier so this is a black pigment but it's actually got like a little bit of a, a dull brown to it so when you flood it into this you know this sort of cracks here like this and then we blow it blow it away like that it looks like um, dirt it's like dried dirt kind of caked up in there almost like the dirt on a dozer blade or a tractor or something like that um, and it also we can create some amazing blends. So watch what watch this up here when we blow that. Look at that amazing blend that we've got that we've done in seconds. And this is just dry pigment straight out of the bottle. Not mixing it with any water. Just dip your brush in there and start kind of stippling it on here. And whenever you want a bit of a fade or a blend, just feather it away. But we really want to sort of cake it up into into these cracks down here and his feet between the panels where he's been walking around in the dirt and the desert. Well, not really desert. If we wanted him to be like he's walking around in the desert, we'd be using a much lighter color. But the sort of look that we're going for here is a bit of a Mad Max. Um, well, it started off like a Mad Max and ended up more like a like a fallout type vibe. I didn't I didn't plan on making the road look like that with the sticks on there. I was just fiddling around with it. Um, notice how we're putting some shadows here around his feet and around the axe on the base. Always show as much attention to the base as possible. But yeah, the this environment has ended up looking kind of fallout esque, hasn't it? So I'm happy with that. Basically, I was just going for some kind of post-apocalyptic environment for this Blood Axe Orc with his suppressor. He's going to go and assassinate some Primaris captain, I hope. The time has come to paint the hologram. We're going to use Baharoth Blue and we're thinning it right down with water and just flooding it into this uh, projection port or whatever so that's the source and now we're going to create the OSL and using that same 
water Baharoth blue glaze. Um, we're going to just glaze that straight over all of the exterior parts of this projection device all around that central um, port, the source, but always directing it towards towards that source. These little nodes here and just painting those solid Baharoth blue. And adding more Baharoth blue down here where it's really close to the port. And this is our first layer of glaze, or our first color of the glaze of operation. And it's quite a pastel color, and you usually don't want to glaze too much pastel color for a um, for an OSL glow. But you'll see um, what we do with that in a minute. And what we're going to do is get some Sotec green which is a very intense saturated blue. And when we glaze that over the Baharoth blue, which is that pastel -y blue, it just picks it up and intensifies it and carries it the whole way there. That, that Sotec green is going to carry this OSL home. I'm going to put a little bit on this shoulder pad um, and that little shield there, that little imperial shield that he's nicked. Uh, we don't want to put too much, 100% you don't want to put too much here. We want to make sure it's subtle, but it can't be too subtle that you can't see it. So it's a fine, it's a fine line, finding that right balance, putting the, um, putting the glaze, the OSL glaze all the way out here and on the shield, and just knowing how far out to put it um, can be a little bit of a challenge, but it's always better to put too little than too much, and then you can always add more if you need to. As always we're trying to push that glaze towards the source as well. I'm going to actually put a tiny little bit on the side of his face here. It's a little bit far away but I just want to kind of just put the tiniest little subtle subtle blue green glow on his face just to help translate the fact that he's actually looking and interacting with it just gives his face something in common with this whole this whole glowing um, hologram that's going on over here using some Baharoth blue we can pick out some of the the edge highlights and the corners and things like that the corners of this battle damage here the corner of that shield do a little bit on the edge of the shield not too much just a very tiny little bit. Always try and be really subtle with your um, with your OSL. But as I said, not too not too subtle that you can't see what's happening. Just be perfect, I guess. Just do it right. Just do it good. Put a little bit of glow on his walkie-talkie. Again, that's another that's another thing that I added just because I was like, a Blood Axe would have a walkie-talkie, wouldn't he? Now, I know I said that the armor was finished, but we're going to go 110% of the way, and we're going to add some Lothurn Blue. We're going to use this very selectively and glaze it very gently, um, delicately. We're just going to... We need to just um, give this armor a little bit more interest and saturation, I think. The Lothurn blue just picks up um, some of those highlights, some of those blue highlights that we've done, like on the tips of the knee pads and up here on the on the breastplate, and just just um, saturates the blue a little bit and makes it a little bit more interesting. We don't need to go all all out with it. See, like you can see here, when I just glaze a little bit up to the battle damage, just gives it a little bit more of a, another dimension and a bit more interest. And when we push some here around the collar, it it just brightens up that area around the collar, helping us to look at the face ever so slightly, but every little bit helps. Plus it kind of saturates the blue um, in a way that it could be picking up bits of that intense electric blue from the, uh, from the hologram. So 
So it's kind of helping the armor to relate to that hologram in a way. See, and that's all that's all we all I'm gonna do with that Lothurn blue. Just gives the armor a little bit of a ping, just something like wow, oh, that's cool. Okay, I promise this is the final thing for the armor. Um, just some white scar dots around um, mostly around the collar because I'm trying to create some little sparkles around that collar so that you're like just you just look at his head and it's kind of it's a way of framing the head if you imagine yeah it's like it's like it's framing the head um, oh yeah I can't get can't help it I've got to put a little bit on the, um, the teeth here but um, just to pop out those 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 teeth make them look a little bit shiny and we're going to go back to putting some more pings of light on this collar yeah 100% it frames the head and it makes you look at that collar you see how much more that that um, more interesting that collar looks now and we're going to mostly do this on on all of the corners that kind of point towards their collar and direct direct you towards that collar Okay, so this is the hologram. I sculpted this little fella. Um, if you want to know how I created this, um, I show you how in the conversion video. But anyway, here he is. He's a little resin model, and he's transparent. We're going to super glue him to this projection port. And just got to make sure we get him on the right angle before the glue dries. There we are, that's good enough. Cool. So we're mixing up a very thin glaze of Sotec Green mixed with water. But before we put any of this on the model, that um, hologram needs to be primed and I primed him with simply matte varnish from a can so now this paint this glaze the Sotec green glaze is going to cling to the paint um, you, you can't just paint straight over resin it won't work so we're sticking these glazes towards the top of the hologram I don't want to touch the bottom because that intense ceramite white is going to shine up through through the um, the transparent resin hologram and it's going to make it look white and glow white at the bottom so I want it to kind of look blue at the top this is a bit of thin down Cantor blue to create some shadow at the top some sort of blue shadow now we need to use some Baharoff blue to do some very careful highlighting on the tips of the miniature only towards the top so this guy he's a little orc he's a little sergeant in the field he's got his commissar hat and his trench coat and he's got a shooter with a suppressor again everything that everything on this guy says blood axe and I thought about that when I was sculpting him and making him using some white scar we're going to hit up some of the corners don't go overboard um, and if I'm being honest I reckon I went a little bit over overboard here which sucks because you can't undo the paint when you're trying to paint over a transparent thing a little bit too much white there I reckon but it um, it doesn't wreck the effect I don't think it still works once you finish doing those little white highlights He's done, and we can move on to doing the very second last thing, which is painting the, the rim of the base using Abaddon Black and um, using Games Workshop's best brush, as I always say, which is their large base brush. And once we're finished painting the rim, the very last thing we have to do is to seal the model with matte varnish. And once that's done, the model is complete.
So just some notes um, from painting this fella. Uh, resist all temptation to paint the face first because you'll have to paint the face first and then you'll have to paint it again because it's just going to rub off. Um, another another thing I'd like to mention is while I reckon the battle damage looks really good and really effective, um, it was quite it was quite a hassle using the the masking fluid method. So as long as you don't mind spending the time to rub it off, um, you'll be right. But if you want to do something quicker, then uh, a quicker alternative is to use the chipping medium, like how I did in the white scar video so if you want to learn how to do that just check out that white scar video um, that's that's a lot easier but I think this actually looks better make sure when you're painting your heroes like this that you have a word in mind and remember I I used the word blood axe for this guy and it really helped me in every single aspect of this model so if, if you look at his breastplate it says blood axe you can see his shoulder pad says blood axe um, he's got you know imperial an imperial shield on his shoulder pad that is taken his gun just shouts blood axe you know even his his boss pole it's of course it's got the blood axe icon but it's even got a purity seal this tech on his arm here it's just he's, he's giving orders and doing tactics like orcs don't do tactics what's that you know so he's, he's talking to a sergeant in a field the sergeant in the field himself is wearing a commissar hat and all sorts of blood axe gear. His pants have got camo on them. He's got an imperial canteen. He's got camo on his boss pole. The point is, when you think about a specific word, you give, you give that model a word and it will, it will ooze character. That word will define the model and you'll, you'll just watch it come to life in a way that it wouldn't necessarily have done if you weren't thinking about that word all the time. So that's become an important part of my process. Give it a try. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to paint the Orctramarine. Be sure to check out the, the conversion video of this model because it's probably my most extensive conversion yet. And if you want, you can learn how to make one of those holograms for yourself. Righto. See you, mate. Suru.